Blog Talk Radio. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, across the airways, pre-Thanksgiving, the True North podcast, hosted by Bill North. Yours truly, Mark Mancini, playing co-host with him. 347-205-9631. Goes by quick. Catch the archive version, blogtalkradio.com, forward slash Mancini Sports Podcast Platforms, wherever you subscribe to podcasts, powered now by Mancini Media. So as I lay the red carpet down, put the podium in its place, hand off the mic, First of all, Bill, how are you? Second of all, how can people get a hold of you? And third of all, when one guy can't get in there, they bring in the closer of this situation to come in. Props to uh, Warren Brewster. Yeah. Hey, Warren, how are you? I'm doing good, Bill. How are you doing? Yeah, me too. I'm just glad to be here amongst uh, yourself and Mark and our fans and we had to uh, uh, rush you in here, Warren, and we truly appreciate it. <laughs> oh, sure. I'm glad to. The... Thank you for having me. Yeah, we lost the, the – Biden is having a uh, – uh, uh, he'll be back probably next week, but he had uh, some stuff to deal with uh, uh-huh. on that, and we wish him well with that. So, right. Uh, right. Right. So, a great man. Where are you now, Warren? Pardon? Where are you? I'm. I live up in Napa. I'm in the Napa Valley. I I grew up there. Yeah. You went to school. You were after Bill Buckner, weren't you? Yeah. I was two years behind Bill. Right. Yeah. Good dude. Yeah, he graduated. Man. Good dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great player. You well, know, we we were teammates in old. Chicago for a year and a half. Yeah. Hey, Bill, tell, tell, tell us about, about this. Tell us about this new guy. That you've got sponsoring your show, the bookiebrand.com, Joey Rodolfo. He's giving away a $500 gift certificate here uh, pretty soon, and uh, that's 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 a pretty good gift certificate to take. I know, and the clothes, I got one of his shirts on right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, Joey used to, he started Cutter and Buck, he was Buck, and then... Uh, he did real good with Tommy Bahama. He brought them up and put them back on the map. And and uh, uh, he's a good friend and known him 30 years and, and one of my favorite people in the world. We're glad to have him. You know? But let's get on to yeah. baseball. <laughs> <laughs> fire away at war and war will fire back. And I know I, you both, I guess, you had the Astros, the, the – to beat the Phillies, and boy, that's an oddity, to, 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 you know, uh, thinking that Philly team came in hot. I'll start with you, Bill, and then we'll give it over to Warren. I didn't see that coming. I, I thought the Phillies would have enough to get by them after they beat them 7 nothing. But after that, I don't know where the Phillies went. <laughs> you know, there's none so blind as those who will not see, Mark. <laughs> the Houston Astros came in there after winning seven straight games in the playoffs, and you sold them down the river after one loss. Now you know what Houston was destined to win that. They had a, a wonderful season. Not that Philly was uh, any joker at that. That was. I think it was a very intense series, and I think it. There was some good baseball play, but I think pitching dominated. Oh yeah, no yeah. doubt about it. Warren, what's your take on it? I know you saw you you thought Houston would take it from the the start, and I guess it's the pitching. And we all grew up, at least, you know, we all know about it uh, as a kid. Ninety percent of baseball is pitching; the other ten percent could be hitting. Until I met a guy not too long ago that told me pitching's 40% of the game, and I go, I don't know what book you read, sir. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, pitching generally dominates. You know, it's pitching and defense, that's how you try to build your, your team. That's how you, you know, win. That's, yeah, that's how you win. That's how you win championships. And, uh, you know, I was surprised that the Phillies took a two-game-to-one lead. You know, I thought, oh, boy, you know, the same thing. They split in San Diego and came home and swept them. And then uh, and they win game one against Houston, and you think, wow, you know, they're going to do the same thing, and that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to sweep. They're not going back to Houston and win another game. 
So, uh, you know, they, and it just uh, the Houston's pitching was just outstanding. You know, and, and you, know, you face a guy like Verlander, who of course won the Cy Young, best in the American League. Uh, he's pretty tough to contend with. <laughs> you know, they were lucky they came back to one game and scored five runs against and came back and won that game, the, the first game of the series. So, uh, <laughs> you know, they they pitching is just it, it has a tendency to dominate. It did, but. You know, Philly does have a chance. They they do have an advantage in that ballpark because that ballpark's a band box. They it's a lot of home runs hit, and that's the way the game's played today. They guys are just launching balls out of ballparks. That's what they're playing for is hitting home runs. I I you know what, Warren? I heard a phrase when they were talking about where baseball has come to. It has become a risk. At, Averse sport, you know. Right. They don't force the issue anymore, and no. and if you get you get a walk, you get a base hit, and somebody pops a home run, and you go from there. But right. uh, uh, and I, I was hoping that uh, uh, the players, the hitters, would get those guys out of those ships. You know, right. and, and st- right. instead of having to legislate to shift out, you know, I right. think that, that they still hit that ball into the same hole, and that when they had all of this green grass over here. And sometimes right. you need base runners. And I don't right. care if it's a, uh, uh, the third hit, fourth hitter, or fifth hitter, just because they hit home runs. You know, sometimes you come up there and you just need a base runner, okay? Right, right. And if they can just – if they move the ball the other way or bunt to get on, now you're trying to win the game. Right. You know, you know like you, I, I would use for an example uh, Buster Posey. Uh, the last year he played, he missed uh, the COVID year, came back after sitting out a year, hadn't played in 18 months. And he was magnificent at hitting balls right at the second baseman because they had everybody shifted to the left side of the infield. And he he hit like 320s last year and just and drove in run after run after run because he'd get two strikes on him and hit the ball the other way. You know, and so he was able to handle the bat. And and but in you know in in the same regard, he was not a home run hitter, so he's not going to hit. Is he'd be lucky to hit 25 home runs and he's much more effective hitting the ball the other way. And that's the game was played. That's when Bill, when you and I played, that's the game and the way the game was played. You ran, you bunted, you moved people over, you, you sacrificed to get people in scoring position. And I think you played it was one a more talented time. game. I think, right. I think that we right. use more talent, you know, right. and, right. and that and, puts pressure you know, on the pitcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have loved you know, to do it. I didn't give up a lot this. of home runs, and that's that right. was my that was one of my strengths is not giving up home runs. I played in Wrigley for three years. Yeah. And I gave up like five home runs in, in three years there. Were you there you in know. '78? No, I was there '83, '84, and '85. I was on the '84 team Uh-oh. that lost the two uh, had a two game nothing lead and lost three to San Diego. I was on that team. Well, I mean, I, I meant the Phillies, though. Yes, yes. I was there. My rookie year was 77. Oh, you were there. Then you were there at the playoffs in 78? Oh, yeah. Of course. Black Friday. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, 78, you guys beat us. Go ahead. You beat I'm us sorry. two and you beat us two in Philly, and then we had to go to L.A. and win three. And Gary Maddox dropped a fly ball the Saturday afternoon game, in the fourth game. I remember that. And, and yeah. you, know you know what? One of the classiest answers uh, after that is I ever heard. They said, right. Uh, uh, they said to Gary Maddox, they said, well, what happened? And he said, I dropped the ball. <laughs> yeah. He said, was it the wind? Was it the sun? Or what was it? He said, I dropped the ball. Where are you guys with in them other 500 balls I caught? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you, you as an outfielder, know that ballpark is the time of day. I used that. <laughs> and, 
anytime, you know, as well as an outfielder in that ballpark, that is a tough, tough ballpark to play when it's in from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. I can remember in batting practice, always going to left field. I always stood in right center at home. I went to left field just so the sun was out of my eyes. It was unbelievable how tough it was to see that. Here's the thing, guys, and I'll, I'll start with you, Warren, give it over to Bill. The Dodgers have not tendered the contract to Cody Bellinger, and I think Cody Bellinger is one hell of a defensive outfielder. And I think the three destinations, when I look at where he might go, I say Toronto, because this guy can be Devon White again, um, Chicago, where the Cubs are interested in him, and if he goes to St. Louis, we all know if you get picked up in St. Louis, you end up being there for a decade. Case in point, the Matt Holidays, the Jim Edmonds, the Mark McGuire's, you guys both played in Chicago. What could he do if he goes to Chicago to play for the Cubs? I mean, the, the sky's the limit on home runs if they straighten out his swing. Am I on to something, Warren? And we'll give it over to Bill. Oh, I, I definitely. You know, and I think that's what he needs right now more than anything is to change the scenery. You know, because he, he was the MVP a few years ago. You know, and, and I just, I, I, to me. I, I, it blows me away to see how he's fallen. And all of a sudden, I mean, if, as a hitter, you don't forget how to hit. I mean, that's their strength. And that was, he was a great hitter. And, but to his defense, I mean, I, when he eliminated the Giants a couple of years ago in the playoffs, uh, he was hitting a buck 60. And Posey calls a breaking ball on a pitcher that's throwing 100 miles an hour. And I didn't understand that at all where he's hitting the buck 60 for a reason. You know, he's having a hard time getting around on fastballs. They're mismatching him right now. And to throw him a breaking ball is the only thing that he could possibly put in play, and he hit a rocket right up the middle to win the game. And I just – I didn't understand that. That 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 bothered me a little bit. Bill? I think that uh, there was a, a, a game down there that I out out uh, – uh, comment on uh, years ago and it involved a guy named Dennis Eckersley and a guy named Kirk Gibson. Right. Now, right. Gibson's legs were bad. Right. And Eckersley threw him fastballs and he couldn't turn on anything. Right. Okay. Right. And then he dropped down to that three quarter or almost half and he floated that slider over to the middle of the plate, and I said, mm-hmm. damn. Because <laughs> right. that, that's the same thing with Bellinger. But you said, that's the only pitch he could hit. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. And, yeah. But, and, uh, but and I, I give it think up. Cody, I think Cody is a head case. Right. And, and right. It, 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 to the point that, that he lost his spot uh, right. uh, as far as when he was hitting, and then he went to experimenting, and he hasn't mm-hmm. come, come back from that yet. And, right. and and so I think he's kind of in between. He's got maybe three swings when he should only have one. Uh, right, uh, right. And I think that he's in between gaps in those three uh, swings that he has. And that right, right there is it gives you just – as a hitter, it gives you just an ounce of doubt. Okay. Right. right. And, 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 and you, now you're confused, and that's all a pitcher needs is, is for you right. to have that one millisecond of where you're thinking and not swinging. It's hard right. to think and hit at the same time. Exactly. Can't do it. But same thing pitching. It, you know, it's, it's reaction. It's a game of reaction. You, you react to what you just saw your pitch before. And right. and you see as a pitcher, you see a guy in doubt, and you see all of, all of a sudden you see holes in his swings, and you know right where to attack. You know, and that's sure. what's happening to him. He's, he's well, just like you said, he's caught in the middle. He's, he's in between right, right now instead of just saying, I'm going to hammer a fastball, I'm going to look in, or I'm going to look away, whatever his strength is, and staying with yeah. that. And instead of he's trying to do too much, you know, he's trying to hit a five run homer every time up. You're right. Right. I always felt that when you're, when you're slumping, the best thing that you can do 
is push balls off your hands the other way. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because of- well, here's what we're going to do, guys. Here, here's, here's, here's a good thing with the last 15 minutes of this show. I want to stack up your World Series champion um, and make a case for it, Warner, against Bill North's World Series champs, the Oakland A's out there. And I, I want to know if you guys get – this is going to be fun in the 15 minutes to break this thing down position by position – because I know those teams in the 70s and 80s, they were the best in baseball, guys, I, I, to this day. I mean, uh, to get through the gauntlet of, of, of good teams in the 70s and going into the 80s, Warren, we'll start it out with you. When you break these right. things down to compare his your 80 World Series champs with his uh, 70s of the uh, Oakland A's. Right. Well, you mean those well, <laughs> You mean those three years in a row? <laughs> right. They were trying to see. Yeah. yeah. Had free agency never came into being, the A's would have still been winning. <laughs> yeah, that's if that's if Bowie Kuhn didn't stop Vida Blue and Raleigh right. Fingers yeah. going to the uh yeah, yeah to the Boston. Yankees and somebody else going to Boston yeah. that year. I think it was yeah, yeah Joe that, Rudy. Joe yeah, Rudy and Bill North got a great story on that. You got you guys working to play, right, Bill? Oh no, uh, 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 it was a, against Boston, and I think uh, 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 no, yeah, Mike Andrews thing. The Mike Andrews, right. thing. Mike had a, a, a Steve case of Steve Sachs uh, um, throwing. Bovia, you know, like the yips, and uh, uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie fired him. He he just wanted to make Bowie Q look bad. He did the same thing with <laughs> me and because he he wanted to have twenty four players on the bench to make Bowie Q look bad, and and the players didn't like Mike being a pawn like that, and so we. We kind of just said, hey, man, we ain't playing. <laughs> and, and, and I'm telling you, it's right down until game time. It was it was like you sitting there seeing who's go, playing the game of chicken. And, right. and Charlie broke, you know. But, hey, we did that more than once, though. <laughs> Yeah, what a what a team back then, Vida Blue, and then you had Joe Rudy, Sal Bando, Burt Campanaris. You were part of that, Reggie Jackson. I mean that 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 team was solid, along with their uh, white cleats and uh, yellow and green garb. I mean the swinging A's. They, you know what they were? They were the team. There's. Three kinds of te- uh, two kinds of teams. There's a talented team. They'll they might play 500, and then you have a fundamental. Team. They're going to play you better than 500. But the team that wins it all is a talented fundamental team, and that's what the Oakland A's were. Uh, uh, they when we went between the white lines, either the center field or somebody hit a ball out there. My job was to get the ball and throw it to the closest guy coming out of the infield. I'm through. And every and then uh, Campanaris would do what he did, and we just played our positions real well, and and not try to overdo it. But if you want to talk about finishing off the game, we are, you know back in those days, War, uh, uh, I was looking at by the blue. And he uh, he he had 24 complete games in the year. Catfish Hunter right. had something like that. Throwing, right. throwing 300 innings, okay, right. 40 starts. So, you know, right, uh, yeah, they pitched every fourth day. Yeah, and that was the way – well, in Philadelphia, when I got to Philadelphia, my rookie year was 77. We had a four-man bullpen. We had five starters and four relievers. We pitched the entire season with 11 pitchers, all 162 games. Wow. Yeah. 
And, and, and you guys, you guys had a little, uh, you had a southpaw on your own side there, Warren, and a guy named Steve yeah. Carlton. Right. You know, and boy, how amazing would that have been if interleague was back in the '70s, seeing Carlton go against Vita Blue. Right. Right. If I didn't get home early. For, for, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Randy, uh, Randy Jones and Jim Cott hooked up in San Diego one night, and uh, we were home. We were back at the hotel before it got dark. <laughs> it was like an hour and 37 oh, minute yeah. game, something just ridiculous. I mean, uh, shoot, they, they, Catfish, Kenny Holtzman, and Vida Blue would, I yeah. mean, you, hour 45, two, right. uh, two hours max. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll talk about you. You make your date early that night. So. <laughs> and, well, and Bill, the most me, the most memorable thing other than the, winning the World Series uh, in baseball in all the years you played, and I'll give the same question, question over to uh, Warren. Uh, don't bring the World Series. We know that would be the number one thing, probably. But give me a most memorable thing, whether it was a game, whether it was facing a pitcher. Whether it was seeing a city for the first time, what was the most memorable thing for you uh, in baseball for all the great years you played the game? That you are. Oh well, you know, I, to okay. me, my first appearance in the big leagues is just is the most memorable thing for me is to realize you finally made it, and uh, I got to face Steve Garvey. It was the first hit I faced. <laughs> and uh, he, he hit. A, I jammed him, and he hit a little blooper over the infield to drive in two. I came in with runners the second and third, no out, or one out, and hit a little jam shot over the infield to make it seven to nothing. <laughs> so I kind of took the pressure off me, and then I ended up pitching like two and a third that night, and uh, didn't give up another hit. But you know, so it was, it was, you know, that's one thing that I that stands out in my mind. Don't worry Garvey. about that. Bill Thank Norton you. is bringing Garvey on probably next week. He'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm saying Garvey, Garvey could do that. He could drive in the run good as anybody. And he right. and he was so strong, he just pushed that ball off of him. Yeah. Right. right. And, yeah. But you don't mm-hmm. make contact. <laughs> you know? Right. My and you know what? You bring you bring up an interesting point before I give it over to you, Bill. The Dodgers okay. to this day haven't had a first baseman like like you know uh, you know I'll give Freddie Freeman it, but a consistent first baseman year in and year out from all the years uh, you know uh, watching baseball in L.A. They haven't had a guy to replace a Steve Garvey in all those years. And Garv was a good good guy too, uh, but he was strong. Yeah. I'm telling you. Right. Yeah. Had, you, you saw them forearms on him looking, yeah. like, looking Popeye. like Popeye. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Bill, who was your me- most memorable moment? Uh, in baseball, winning the world championship. Yeah, I you went to... I dreamed you know, there. Was... <laughs> but you yeah, told me yeah, that. Oh, we uh, my most memorable moment. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> was it going to Yankee Stadium the first time? Was it going to Boston? Was it getting yelled oh, at from a fan in the stands? Oh, I, all of that stuff. Has it. But I, and you I both think you both it. played in Chicago, so I know those bleacher bums probably started, you know, the night before drinking. Oh well, yeah. I say it. My rookie year, you know, the people are we're we're taking batting <laughs> practice, and people are yelling for a ball. I thought, well, you know, I'm I'm a naive rookie, so I take a ball and throw it up in the stands to him. So I, I you know, I turn around, I, I threw a ball, and the ball came whizzing right by my ear about two seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wanted the dude wanted another Miller Lite from you. <laughs> yeah, right. He didn't want a baseball. Oh no. If the other team hit you know, a home run, and they throw the ball back. You had to. Right. Yeah, right. hey, man. It was good. But you you know, I'll tell you one thing. In the last five minutes, and, and I've never been to the city, 
uh, of Chicago, and I've always wanted to go to Wrigley Field. But, man, oh, man, that is going to be something when you first walk onto the field there or just sit in the stands and watch it. It must be a big picnic. It seems like it's a Mardi Gras every time the Cubs play a home game. Am am I on to something, Bill? And then I'll give it over to you, Warren. Now that you you brought that up, I remember the first day (laughs) when I got called up. And I got there. I was supposed to be there at 1030. I was there at 830. And I walked yeah. out on the, and they would, you know, they were cleaning the ballpark, and, and, and you know how they get the holes worn and go up and then right. clean and stand and on, and that those guys were the only ones. And I walked out to center field, and I looked around and I said, "So this is the big leagues. This is where I want to be." I actually, did that. Uh, Warren, any t- and what was yours? The same thing with the the. I mean, I, I I just sit here and I think to myself, when I get up to heaven and God decides to send me back down, I want to be a major league baseball player. That'd be the number one choice. It's quite different than the other sports, and I always tell people this: when you look at football, when you look at basketball, when you look at hockey, you're in a city once. You can't really enjoy it. You got to get to that city two, three times, and especially if you see that city once. If you're in the Western time zone or the Eastern time zone, depending on what side of the coin you're on, you can't really enjoy it. But being a major league baseball player, the hardest thing in life, I think, no disrespect to doctors or lawyers, but to go into these cities and spend three to four days, Dudes, I'd be waking up early in the morning and taking in the skylines and everything, probably coming back just in time to grab the bus to go to the ballpark. Any thoughts on that, Bill? We'll give it over to Warren and we'll wrap up the show. I'll tell you this, but you wouldn't like what happened if you were doing all of that because <laughs> you, can't, you can't do all of that and still play baseball. We spend a lot of time in bed in the daytime, you know. <laughs> And that, you get to Atlanta at game number 90 or 110 in August or something like that, and it's 90 degrees with 90% humidity day game after night game, <laughs> you got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Warren, any take on that? Um, you know, talking to two great baseball players that played the game for a long time. He might be on to something, but I'm still trying to play Ranger Rick out there and try to see the scenery. Well, see, Billy played every day. See, I didn't have to play every day. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, you know, yeah, the weather, it catches up with it, especially in Chicago. That was all in, in 84 when we were coming down the stretch. They talked about that where the Cubs are going to fade because they're playing day games every day. And uh, we had enough talent that it, it, we overcame the element. Uh, but to, for me, the first time I was ever in Wrigley Field, uh, my mother's godson lived right outside of Chicago, and I played in Peoria in the summer of 73. And I was fortunate enough to get tickets, and we went to a Cubs game. So that was the first time I saw Wrigley Field. I said, oh, my God, this is just – this is heaven. You know, it's it's unbelievable. Every seat in the ballpark's a great seat. You, you know, it's it's beautiful. And then I was fortunate enough to play there for three years. And, and the you know, the wind dictates what's going to happen that day the majority of the time. It's, it's you know, and then Fergie Jenkins told me, you know, he said, watch left-handed hitters. They'll hit a ball into the left hand, left center field gap, and the, and the wind will just suck it right into the first row of the bleachers, you know. And I'll be damned if, you know, after playing there for <laughs> weeks or a couple months, Every left-handed, like Al Oliver just wore that center, left center field gap out. He just hit home run after home run in that gap. And the, you know, they just he'd get it up in the air and he'd just suck it right in the first row. You know, so there was a little nuances in that ballpark that a guy like Fergie, who'd played there for so long, knew. And, you know, he'd tell all the new guys that came in to play there what was going on. And, you know, it was, and what a great place, you know, to this day. It's, it's a shrine. It's an it's a outstanding place, and you know, hopefully it'll be there forever. Yeah. Wow. Good time. Yep. But, and we're uh, wrapping yeah, it up right now. Yeah. Uh, As we Mark come to the close of this. Yeah, definitely. we got to get Warren back in. Warren, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you, man. 
just a true friend, and I know uh, I've given you uh, Bill's number. Bill, I've given you his number so you guys can reminisce of the old times. But, Warren, let everybody know uh, how they can get a hold of you, my good friend. I know you're the pitching coach at uh, one of the colleges out there, and get that right, across the board, too. Uh, well, thank you for having me, Mark. I could be reached at Brewster. 40 at gmail.com. You know, I love you too. You play the pirates. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Billy, another show in the books, my friend. Let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. I want to wish you and him a happy Thanksgiving. All the listeners, too, across the board. I know next week we'll be on. But let everybody know how they can get a hold of you, Bill. I'll give that to you next week because I'm making some changes on my email to uh, to get a, a another one so that everybody can't find me. So uh, I'll get that. But uh, uh, Warren, I'm so glad that you were on. It's good to talk to you and, and get you, to Bill. know you a little bit better. Uh, and thank, thank you so much. Thank you for having Please. me. Yeah. yeah. So happy, happy Thanksgiving to you both. Yes. Well, we love you. you. We love you all dearly, guys. For Bill North, for Warren Brewster. Here's Julie Mark Mancini saying, if you want to catch this archive version, catch it on BlogTalkRadio.com forward slash Mancini Sports podcast platforms. You already subscribe to podcasts. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We're back on next week, and stay safe.